to Canada. I'm Sarah King, obviously, founder of Invigorate Physical Therapy and Wellness. I am in Vancouver, Canada on the very last day of the International Parkinson's Congress for Movement Disorders and Parkinson's, very long name. Um, but we are on our final day and I wanted to hop in here um, real quick and give you guys an update about the gut microbiome that we learned about yesterday. Um, talked a lot about how it impacts Parkinson's and we we're going to talk a little bit about caffeine. So if you guys are hopping in here, just say hello, um, give me a little thumbs up, let me know you're in here. Um, I have to say that uh, I was expecting a little bit more from this lecture, which um, there was still a lot in there, and I think we're making progress in the, um, in the world of the gut microbiome, but um, it did not offer as many kind of treatment approaches and treatment options as I was hoping. It was just a lot of information about the latest research, which I'm going to share with you guys here. But if you're looking for some actionable tips to help you get your gut microbiome in order, um, I'm going to give you a few today, but I really want to invite you, if you haven't gone through our free gut health series, Invigorate's um, gut health series, we, I did a four-part video lecture that's completely free that you can find at invigoratept.com slash gut health. And when you sign up, you get a workbook to go through these four videos, and it really outlines why gut health is important to your Parkinson's symptoms, um, mainly to your brain health, and then walks you through exactly step-by-step step how to start overhauling your lifestyle, not even just your diet, but overhauling your lifestyle and giving you the tools that you need to really optimize your gut health, because as you're going to learn here in a second, it is... Um, exploding in the research and interest and it's really going to be the future of um, how we treat not just Parkinson's but other neurological um, and cognitive disorders in the future too. So I think we're going to post a link in the comment section below to go sign up for the gut health series um, and then you automatically can start that series today and watch it and follow along and get your gut in order. So yesterday we went to a lecture called the gut microbiome and this was the first actual lecture I've ever heard at a major conference about Parkinson's that the researcher at the front of the room actually spoke the words Parkinson's patients have what's called a leaky gut. If you've been following Invigorate for a while you know that I am big on the leaky gut. Um, if you're new to Invigorate um, let me help define some of these terms for you. So gut microbiome, um, microbiome is really just the collection of bacteria, um, archae, fungi, parasites, um, hopefully not parasites, but uh, viruses um, inside of your stomach, your intestines, um, your colon. That's just a bunch of little bugs that are inside of your gut that really help you um, express your genotype. So we're finding that there are one to ten times the number of microbiome or microbiota in your body than you have actual human cells. So you're made up of mostly um, the microbiome. And this is important because if we're not um, feeding our microbiome and treating our microbiome well, then you can imagine that if we have more of those than we have human cells, it's going to impact the way that we feel, the way that we think, the way that we um, digest, the way that we um, do everything. And so I want to really call that to your attention. That's what the gut microbiome is. And then leaky gut is um, a kind of slang term for um, intestinal permeability. And I go through this in the gut health series, but a quick overview is your, your gut lining is supposed to be really tight, full of tight junctions. And um, over time, because of medication and stress and um, poor eating habits, that gut lining starts to be permeable and get some, get some holes. Those junctions kind of loosen up a little bit and lets more stuff through into your bloodstream than should, than should be there. And so the research is now suggesting that in Parkinson's patients, specifically, that gut lining is leaky, which means that you are getting more into your bloodstream, um, more toxins, more ev everything that you really shouldn't be um, into your bloodstream, and it's going to go up actually to your brain and affect the way that you um, process um, your cognition, your mood, um, your motor, um, all of your, your motor, so your movements. 
Um, your gut influences the way that your brain works, and then your brain actually goes down and influences the way that your gut works. And this is, you know, research that's being presented at this international congress. And, um, you know, the, the question is, it's kind of which comes first, you know, does the brain influence the gut? Does the gut influence the brain? They're not really sure. It's kind of a, a chicken or the egg type of situation. So I want to just encourage you, if you're coming late, um, you know, I really want to encourage you to hop on the gut health series. Again, it's free. I'm really passionate about this because I really believe that if we can't get our gut health in order, kind of our, our foundation, build a really strong foundation with some sound practices to be to treat our gut microbiome correctly, then, um, you know, just piling on top of, just piling medication and exercise and all this other stuff on top of it, um, you're not getting the most out of your program as you potentially could. So they talked a lot about this study called um, Gut Microbiota Regulate Motor Deficits and Neuroinflammation in a Model of Parkinson's Disease. So um, I'm happy to share the link to the study in the comment section below so you guys can check it out. But essentially what this study found, and this was in um, a rat model, they kind of interacted human feces, human microbiota, with um, rats who have been, um, you know, kind of engineered to have Parkinson's in some ways. And so what they're finding is that your microbiome is actually influencing the way that alpha-synuclein is um, implicated in Parkinson's disease. So alpha-synuclein is that protein you've probably heard about that gets clumped up and can um, is highly correlated, obviously, with Parkinson's disease. So if you have a disrupted microbiome, it's impacting the way that you, um, your body produces these um, protein cells, alpha-synuclein, and that impacts your symptoms. So something that was interesting about this study, they talked about colonizing um, a mouse who has, who's predisposed to the misfolding of those proteins, which might be the same way that humans are. We're predisposed because of our genetics. When you put um, Parkinson's, essentially microbiome, in that rat who is predisposed to not, um, predisposed to misfolding their alpha-synuclein proteins, then they ended up having worse motor symptoms. So in a nutshell, that just means that your microbiome, your gut health, is impacting the way that your body functions, your alpha-synuclein, and then it influences your motor symptoms directly, um, according to this study in this, in this rat model. So again, that comes back to which came first, Parkinson's or leaky gut, Parkinson's or disrupted gut microbiome, and again, they really don't have a clear answer for that, but you need to be stacking the cards in your favor. Um, you know, if we wait for the research to decide if it's gut health first or brain health first, um, we're going to be waiting for quite a while because those studies are still underway. There's really only nine large randomized controlled trials that um, are supporting this as of right now. So again, head over to invigoratept.com slash gut health. Um, it's a free four-part video series, and I really want you guys to be a part of it, and I would love to hear how, um, you know, I've heard from so many people who have gone through that program who felt like their symptoms were improved, their energy is better, they lose weight, which is a bonus, not super important for Parkinson's. Um, just like feeling very, very empowered and strong after that four-part series. So um, that's a quick plug on that. The next thing that we talked about in this workshop was the connection between gut microbiome and functional gastrointestinal disorders. So your gut um, you know, con this has to do with constipation or diarrhea. A really interesting fact that I wanted to share with you guys that I had not seen before was from a study talking about the prevalence of irritable bowel syndrome and functional constipation um, and other related bowel symptoms in Parkinson's. And what they found was that 17%, you had a 17% more likelihood of, ha or I'm sorry, 17% um, of Parkinson's patients had func functional constipation, um, and 43% had irritable bowel syndrome. That is a huge number, and I, um, most of the time I hear from my end people complaining about constipation um, and not necessarily about all these other symptoms that come with irritable bowel syndrome. So if you're having, um, you know, large, mushy, watery stools, and um, at least sometimes you may consider talking to your doctor about um, potentially having IBS and being screened for it. Again, it wasn't something that I was really familiar with. 
Um, and when you aren't, when your when your poop essentially, when your feces is either backed up or too runny, you're not um, able to absorb the nutrients that you need or um, the medication that you're putting in your body. So that really can impact the way that your symptoms come across, even if it's just because you can't absorb your nutrients correctly. So you need to be keeping track of your symptoms. And um, something that they found in that study as well was one bacteria that is found to be low and decreased in Parkinson's is also very low and decreased in irritable bowel syndrome. So um, just keeping that in mind, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, bacteria here in a second. Okay, let me just say hi. Cheryl's in here from Michigan. I can't not say hi. I see Christian's in here. I can only see some comments. So if you're putting in comments and I don't acknowledge you, I'm sorry, it's not, um, it's not you. It's just sometimes I can only see a few comments. Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, so we were talking about the gut and we're talking about poop. Welcome, welcome. It's gonna get even better. Tomorrow, Naomi and I are going to sit down and talk about sex and sexual challenges uh, from Vancouver. So make sure that you guys tune in for that tomorrow. Tino. Hi, Tino from Vegas. You've been here all week. Welcome back. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about gut, the gut microbiome again, but really what bacteria is high and what bacteria is low in people with Parkinson's. Um, and I just have to say, again, this this lecture was not heavy on the actioning, you know, taking action on what this means. It just really delivered information and uh, let us practitioners figure out how we want to interact with it. So um, really the best reproduced evidence is that there are increased abundances of uh, acromantia and lactobacillus, which are two um, bacteria, and decreased abundance of provotella in Parkinson's. And those are some of the strongest correlations as far as the disruption in your gut. So you're, you're supposed to have all this different types of variety of microbiome in your gut and your system. And when um, some things that get too, too much and there are some things that get too little and that disruption is called a gut dysbiosis. That's a big fancy word, but gut dysbiosis is strongly linked to Parkinson's disease. So let me scroll through some of this. Um, kind of boring stuff. So again, the treatment, really there wasn't anything outlined. You know, we, we were really hoping to hear, so, you know, because there's this gut dys dysbiosis, you should be taking a probiotic that has this low one and doesn't have this, these high populations of microbiome in it or uh, bacteria in it, but really they didn't make a lot of suggestions. So if you're looking for, you know, some common sense approaches that aren't extreme, that don't, you know, take a lot of supplements, um, it all has to come from the way that you eat, the way that you manage stress. Actually, stress is a big impact on your gut microbiome. So if you're looking for that guidance, again, I'm going to hammer it home just a few more times. I really want to invite you to go over to invigoratept.com slash gut health free four-part video series. I outline why it's important, what to do about it, um, and how to set yourself up in the long run to have the best and healthiest gut microbiome that you possibly could have. So... Um, the final question that um, I wanted to answer here that I get a lot was putting a definitive answer into, is caffeine helpful for Parkinson's? Should I be drinking coffee or should I not be drinking coffee? And you guys know that I'm a, I love coffee. I love my bulletproof coffee. Um, and I almost never take caffeine away from my clients, but they were talking, they showed a bunch of studies that said that caffeine consumption is actually associated with a slower disease progression. So for all of you caffeine lovers out there, you're welcome. Um, you know, make sure that you are, if you can, you know, drink organic, kind of locally roasted to minimize the toxins so that you can improve your gut health. But caffeine is totally okay. And I think um, they also said that green tea, um, not just coffee, caffeine in general is associated with slower disease progression. So that is the overall what we got from the Gut Health Series. I know you all had a lot of questions about supplementation and this talk really didn't go that direction. And um, the researchers that presented were not really keen on making suggestions in that realm. So we're going to keep an eye out for the answers to your supplement questions. And um, we're going to head to the conference today. By we, I mean my host, Naomi Casero from NeuroFitBC. She's hosted me all week. 
Um, so later today I'm going to learn about alternative and complementary approaches to Parkinson's and um, tomorrow share that with you and then come to you with a joint um, kind of back and forth with Naomi. We're going to talk about sexual dysfunction and sexual challenges, uh, probably one of the most fascinating talks we've been to here in Vancouver. So please, if you found this helpful for anyone, um, share it with them, share with your support groups, your neurologists, your healthcare practitioners, share um, with anyone that would be helpful for them. And of course, I always appreciate that too. So if you guys have more questions about the gut microbiome, put them in the comment section below and I'll hop on here and give you as many answers as I possibly can. So until we see each other very soon, um, have an awesome, awesome day and I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.